understated, hardworking, honest, full of integrity. A very steady and calming influence. That looks like him. Yeah. Manager, a team, you have to have that character, that personality, and he's got the... Yeah. You like me, I'm using those yeah, things as yeah, well, well, the old specs. Well, unfortunately, I'm having to use them far more than before. Tell me about it, I'm up there all the time. I can barely see you now. How are you doing? I'm OK, good. 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 First time yeah. here? First time here, amazing for yeah, nice yeah, that's great. No, it's a lovely sound. And really? you get the weather too down And we get the, the nice weather, coast. you picked a good day. It is, it's a good one. Chris's stock is as, as high as any manager that we've had here in the club's history and uh, long may that continue. Chris, it's an awfully long time since we um, overlapped at Tottenham. I was thinking on the way down, I think Chris is a little bit older than me, so I, I did the old Wikipedia search and there you, you've got a big birthday coming up very yes, soon. I do. Yes, you? I do, which, which I'm trying not to remind people of yeah. unless um, people remember it. You had a lovely playing career. Highlights? Mm. The 81 Cup final. Um, I think one because of the, the way that we won it, the, the winning goal, which um, which still sees uh, Ricky Villa coming over. It was magical. Every, hours, well, he comes over, I think, most <laughs> most summers now, around about uh, the FA Cup time. Um, so for that goal, but it was also it was our first mm. achievement. So that would have been certainly my uh, my biggest highlight, I think. He's very personable with all of us. Um, knows knows everyone by name, from everyone he works close with, down to down to the cleaners and it's just lovely every day when he comes in and says hi how's your weekend or how's it going how's your family so it's really good to work with him so often people say about well chris hewton he's, he's such a nice guy you can't be that nice to be a successful manager i think even mike ashley or, or newcastle use that as a kind of excuse he's too nice to be a manager I'd like to think as, uh, in as many situations as, as possible, I'm fair, that's, that's what I, I'd like to think, but, but you, you can't be nice all the time. We, we have to make so many decisions and so many tough decisions. We all know we've, we've been there, you know, why are you leaving me out of the team? Um, Do you find that hard? Um, or have you got used to no, it? No, I've, I've got used to it. Good. Just getting you ready for a bit of work with the gaffer. He's really open you know to talk after of course he has to take the decisions you know but, but uh, his door is always open i've read that about you that you always like to talk mm. to the players where a lot of managers i mean perhaps people wouldn't believe that but a lot mm. of managers you, you you could never get to speak to them if you were left out or you there, there's some kind of what you felt was a wrongdoing the relationships that you have with players they're ongoing so a player's out of a team um, today you know you're going to need him next week, you know, the week after. They all know where they stand with him. Uh, he doesn't mince his words in respect of things that are going on and we all know what he requires and we make sure we deliver on a weekly basis. Three of the longest serving managers at present at, in, in the Premier League, Sean Dyche, Eddie Howe and yourself, let's call you British and Irish managers. Yes. Why do you think it is, despite doing so well, Perhaps the big clubs never ever go for those kind of managers. The Premier League, you know, shows a clamour to bring in the best, what they regard as the best world managers. Probably we are at a stage now where, you know, for any British manager to manage in the Premier League, they're going to have to bring a team up. Is the part where you think, I'd love a chance at one of the monster clubs? Uh, no, I don't think not. No, no? no. because I, I generally only think I think of the job where I am at the moment, and my my ambitions are not to manage at the top clubs. My ambitions are to do the very best job that I can in the job that I'm doing. I, I suppose it, it brings me to another point, of course, that you, you've obviously spoken about many times before. Why do you think it is so so few black players have been given the opportunity mm. to manage? Well, I, th I think we're, we're certainly going through uh, a period now and, and we're going through a period of uh, certainly more conversation. And mm. um, what I'm seeing now, of course, with uh, even with uh, the FA, where there will be a black and ethnic coach involved in, in all levels of, of, uh, of their, their teams. Uh, I think we're at, we are at a different phase at the moment. Um, there's no doubt there's, there's a huge imbalance um, in the past and there's no doubt that we've, we've been through periods and have gone through periods and I think in, perhaps in, in some 
um, people's eyes, it hasn't changed so much where, you know, black players were seen as good athletes, you know, good forward players, but, the, but not, you know, captain material, not managerial uh, material. And, um, why, do you think, why do you think that view persisted? Um, well, I think it persisted because, you know, because of society. Mm. And, you know, I was brought up in an era where it's completely different to how it is now on a turnstile. So uh, I would have played in front of, of stands away from home, at, certainly at particular places where, you know, huge sections of the, the crowd would have, would have been giving me racial abuse. Mm. Not from the players, though? From opposition players. I don't know, there would have been... There'd have been Numerous occasions where you would have had racial abuse from opposition players, their way of uh, how they would have seen it, trying to wind you up, and and so um, and what you had to do is that you you had to work through it really on your own because um, although you had a, a you know a supportive team behind you. You know, you generally didn't talk about these issues. Is it is it changing? Is the progress being made um, on that front? I think in some quarters uh, there's progress, uh, uh, definitely at grassroots level and, and academy level, um, and uh, even you know even here you know if I look at uh, the the four years that um, that I've or the three and a half years I think that, mm. that I've been here, um, and we see a lot of the young players coming into train and and definitely the, the the background has changed that way you know far more black and ethnic young kids training here. Um, it's at the top level where, where you know, there haven't been the significant changes. Some changes, um, but there haven't been the significant changes. And changes mean addressing an imbalance because there is a, a huge imbalance. Mm, especially nowadays compared with the amount of players that are yes. from those ethnicities compared with uh, mm. certainly 20 years ago. Well, there's no bigger example than, than looking at uh, the the young England teams, mm. you know, and um, when I, I look at, um, hopefully, a lot of the, the the young players coming through and having great careers, and and what you are hoping is is that that over that period of time, that the way that the game is, is that you know some of them can become you know coaches, have good mm. careers, can, can become coaches, and, and and probably become managers. Mm. He's brought a high level of professionalism and performance, which are the two things that you know we, we strive to achieve here week in, week out. He's taken us from a, a side that was struggling in the championship when he arrived to a promoted side and to a side that survived its first season in the Premier League and now we're looking to build on that. How do you see yourself as a coach? What's your kind of philosophy, if you could describe it to us? I like a team that's, uh, that's organised and prepared to work you know, hard for each other. And if you are able to, to bring in gifted players, it's more about making sure that them gifted players, you know, fit into what we do here. Am I a manager that's, that you know, wants to play over ex expansive? I think certainly if you are a, a club that, that is able to do that in this, in this division, it's, it's a... Do you think playing that way would be a recipe for disaster for Brighton? Uh, for us, uh, yes. Um, I think for those that do play that way with the players that they've got, it's wonderful to see and they can... That brings you back to the point a little bit about managing a big club with the big players and big stars mm. to be able to play that kind of football. Do you feel yes. a little bit trapped in the way you have to play at Brighton? No. Um, it's... Uh, I think it's a realisation is, is that at this moment we're playing in, in the, the top league. Uh, we're playing against teams that, that have spent more money, that have better players than us. Uh, so they're great challenges. When a top six team loses a game against the likes of ourselves, then it's generally about why they lost and not, not why, we, why we won. So How special is it when you beat a team like you did a few weeks ago? Go Manchester it, United. It's, it, it's what you, you work for. And f for a club like this, you know, that feeling lasts for a while. Last question, what's your target this season for Brighton? To improve as a football club, to improve as a team and to, to make sure that we can go again next season in the Premier League. And beat Manchester City away from home on at the weekend. That, that, nice would, be, that would be very nice. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thanks, You're Chris. welcome. You're welcome.